Over the last few years, I've been incredibly clear on my recommendations on feeding big fish in big tanks, especially when there's a group of them. And I always recommend feeding them in one spot. Same spot repetitively. The reason is very simple. If you ever need to put your hands in your aquarium and you're used to feeding the fish whenever, wherever you want to, your hands become a food source. They start associating your hands with food. Every time his hands in the tank, we get food or wherever he puts his hands, there's food. Look at what I just did. Now, if I come over onto this side, even with all the lights on and going, there's no way, especially once the others come over and they start with their pack, there's no way I'm putting my hand in here. They will bite me. Why? This is the side that I feed them on every time. A lot of the times though, if I start with my hands over there and then I can work my way over here, it's fine. I really put my hands in this tank. As you can see, I let them rearrange everything the way they want to. You can apply this to almost all aquariums, especially when you're trying to train them to do something. Come over here. Where I'm going with this is fish are relatively easy to train to do what you want. So long as you don't associate yourself with being the food. Now, let me put this into even further context. Remember the archer fish? Well, back in, I believe it was like August of 2020, we got a pack of clouded archer fish. We still got them, but we did talk about the fact that these guys have developed naturally over hundreds of thousands of years, the ability to shoot water at extreme accuracy at insects and bugs and critters and anything they, they think is food out of the water, knock it off a branch, etc. So we thought it would be really cool. A month later after quarantine, we add them to the 2000 and that kind of just never happened. Tank was too big. It was too large for me to do any type of training. Uh, about a, a year and a little bit later, we set up this 180 gallon aquarium and set it up as a true brackish water aquarium. We have scats as well as mono. And that's where the true training began. Start by taking the lid off, which a lot of the times causes them to scatter around. So I'd have to take the lid off, come back later, wait till they've kind of settled down. They're a little used to me now, but at the time, I, every time I took that lid off, it was causing them to scatter. I started off by putting my hands over the tank like this, letting them see it, see if they'll spit at it. If not, just letting them know that this is associating it with food and eventually drop it in the water and well, without all the lights and me standing here right in their face, they would typically go after it. <laughs> so every day I come over with a little piece of krill before I feed anybody. Sometimes I'd wait a day or two to get them really hungry and I'd sit here and wait till they spit at me if they do at all. Then just drop it in the tank. And then the plan of course was to slowly stop using my hands, put it on a target, make them spit at the target and then it can fall off of that target into the water and they get their reward, their treat. But it wasn't happening, it was going nowhere. So of course, out of frustration, I just chucked the food in, let them have it. Then of course, just put the lid back on and try another day. I started, I started to give up and I couldn't give up because you guys were so excited just as much as me to see this happen, to see us train these guys. And I started racking my brain, what could this be? Come back over to my desk and just rack my brain. I'm like, damn, every time I go over there, I gotta take the lid off, I gotta wait a little bit. Is it the lid? So I took the risk of fish jumping out and I took the lid off. Let's see what happens if we don't incorporate that moment in time where they kind of jump out of the way or they get scared or skittish during that time where you know, you're removing the lid, humidity's dropping down and that sort of thing. Well, I just went back to feeding them every day. I just never put that lid back on. Every day I just go over and once again, try to train them to spit at my hands, do whatever I could to get them. And they just wouldn't do it. Feeding in the same location, doing the same thing over and over and over again, not giving up and months are passing by. It got to the point where I literally forgot that the lid was always off and that I'm supposed to be trying to train these archer fish. And next thing I know, my roof starts leaking. Every day I would come out to the gallery and I would look for water on the floor to see where this was leaking, but it was always leaking when I was around this table. So I'm thinking, okay, the roof is leaking. 
I can't see, maybe it's coming through the light or you know, maybe it's coming through somewhere that I can't see or heck, maybe it's the humidity, who, humidity out here because I did have a humidity issue when the air exchanger broke, but I fixed that and replaced it completely. The air out here is pretty awesome, in fact. It's almost ideal. The, uh, the temperature out here is 26 degrees Celsius and the uh, humidity percentage is about 64, which is a little bit higher than ideal and the temperature is a little bit more than ideal. I heat the gallery and not the individual aquariums. It's far more economical to do that way. And that might seem like it's uncomfortable and it would certainly be so to live there, live in that, but to just come out here once in a while, especially in the winter, it's quite nice. But like I said, it was only happening when I was sitting here. When I was sitting here, I discovered and I, I started to get my suspicions. It can't be humidity. The roof can't be leaking. I didn't even think that the archers were spitting at me until one day I was, I would constantly happen in podcasts. Your, 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 one of your goals are is to, to move into like a retail location, to have another store no. of some oh. sort or no. just to stay online. Uh, I mean, online is for, they spit it's the me. way to do it these days. I mean, it's so much better. I'm not opposed to a fish store. I just don't want to own one myself. Because uh, then you have to be there, and you or you have to staff it, and there's all the insurance and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I just don't know that that's something either. She's hinted about. I would get spit at, and I didn't want to interrupt the guest and be like, somebody just spit on me, because the only other person there is Tamara. I mean, like, maybe she spit on me, but I doubt it. And then, you know, you go about your day, you continue your podcast, et cetera, and you kind of forget about it. But uh, every time I would sit here, I'd get, I'd get dripped on a bunch of times, like four or five times. So one day I decided to go back over to the archer tank and lo and behold like i said i never put the lid back on and i totally forgot when i do my water changes or anything i never really put my hands in there i never really get up there and look down on the tank so i you know m literally months went by no fish were ever on the floor nobody ever jumped out but they had a clear path to spit at me or did they see when i bring over the cameras and the lights and try to or even go near the tanks, they don't really act like that. So I decided one day I would take my cell phone and like, I always have like a t-shirt or a, like a towel here. And I set my phone up like this. And then I went back and literally pretended to be busy. Like doo -doo -doo -doo, just sitting here, not looking at them, not looking at them, not looking at them. And lo and behold, those little buggers spit at me and I caught it on camera. So now, They've gotten more and more comfortable. Every time I come out here, they'll typically spit at me. This is the first time I've told this story other than the uh, membership of the channel. They've known this story for a while, but uh, I do find it slightly embarrassing. What's even more embarrassing is I've decided to leave the lids off. If you're hungry, just spit at me. That is not a healthy relationship. Anyways, I did successfully train the archer fish to spit at food just not in the way that we planned.